Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video where I'm going to go through my IGCSE 067 predictions paper 2 for both the February exam and also the April exam as well so you're the best prepared you can for the exams that are upcoming. Okay, so let's go through these predictions. These are for the exams on the 9th of February and also for the 26th of April as well, both in 2022. So there's a lot of information in this particular video, so do really do go through it a couple of times if you really need to get all the information required. Now we're going to start with what's called the topics of interest. So these are the least often topics, but as you can see, if we take symmetry, for example, generally either lines of symmetry or rotational symmetry here, they've still appeared four times out of 13 papers. And what I've done here is I've taken the last 13 papers, so 2021, and the 2020 papers to really give you the best predictions possible. Now standard form, again, only three times, but often combined with indices, which is a topic that I will mention a bit later. Uh, graph sketching has come up, so they might ask you to do y equals one over x. So then be able to sketch that without a calculator. Fraction work, this is usually the four operations, so you'll be expected to add, subtract, multiply, and divide fractions. Uh, absolute value is actually quite high here at 5 out of 13 papers and this can be a mixture of asking you to solve an equation like this so the modulus of x minus 7 equals 13 or maybe even apply the absolute value function to a graph so be aware of that now you'll notice these topics here so Venn diagrams and vectors I'm going to put together here these are generally paper 4 topics but as you can see, occasionally, they will also appear on the paper two as well. So again, it's worth revising these topics anyway. I'll talk more about that in my paper four prediction video. But be aware, occasionally it will come up on the paper two. Uh, speed distance time, so make sure you're aware of also converting units. This is one thing I'd like to mention. So when I say converting units, they might give you something out of meters per second and then ask you to change that to kilometers per hour. So you'll need to know the process to do that. And lastly, sequences. Now, this is something that can appear both on the paper two and a four paper as well, um, but generally applies on the paper six investigation. This is where generally sequences will be assessed. But again, be aware that very occasionally these can also appear too. Right, on to the often topics. So this is uh, between, say, seven and nine out of 13 papers. These are topics you should definitely revise, but they don't come up every year. So I'm expecting out of the topics I'm going to present to you, say, four out of them will turn up. So just be aware of it. Inequalities is my first point here. Now, this is often solving an inequality. OK, well, what do I mean by that? So I mean something along these lines where they'll set up an inequality where you have to solve it very similar to an equation. Sometimes I ask you to do this with a number line. Shading regions, which used to be very popular about 2015, 2016, um, has now become a bit more popular recently. So this is the kind of diagram which I'm going to show you on the next slide here. So it's something along these lines, and this comes from a very recent paper. And you'll see they give you some various different lines on here. You'll need to know with your coordinate geometry. And then I'll ask you to say, okay, which of these inequalities apply to get a particular region? It's a kind of strange question, but just be aware this did appear um, last year. So you do need to revise this. Again, if you're not sure about anything inequalities, then do check out the videos above. They go through all the different inequalities questions you can get on the paper. On to angle facts. So I've called this topic kind of angle facts and I've highlighted here polygons in specifically and this is to do with internal external angles of polygons have become much more frequent in the last couple of years. So the kind of question we're talking about here is something along these lines. So a regular polygon has 12 sides and work out the sum of the interior angles of the polygon. So you'll need to know the formula for that. I'm not going to say it in this particular video. I just want to highlight some of the questions that you can see. So again, there's a four mark question on the paper too. These are marks you would like to get in the middle of that exam to get those B grades and A grades in particular. On we go to coordinate geometry, which always used to be one of my very, very top topics. And as you can see here, it's slightly come down from six in 13 papers. Uh, however, perpendicular bisectors did come up on the 2-1 paper last year. And this was the exact set question that they had. And this is a five mark question. It doesn't say here, but this is very, very typical. And it's come up 
a majority of years, not on every paper too, but to say on one or two out of three of them. So please do revise this. You'll need to know how to work out a gradient. You'll need, need to know how to work out the perp uh, perpendicular gradient to that and also work at the midpoint as well. All those things feature in this kind of question. On we go to circle theorems. So still a frequent visitor on the papers. Uh, generally, it's spread quite evenly over papers two and four. So I will be mentioning this again in my paper four prediction video. And this is a very typical kind of question here. Um, usually not on the most complicated side, but yeah, really revising those basic facts that you need to know in order to work out various angles. And one thing to be aware of here, and it's kind of appropriate for this question here, is what's called the alternate segment theorem. And that appears more often than you think on these paper two and paper four circle theorem questions. If you don't know what that means, then do check out, there's plenty of uh, videos out there that go through circle theorems. Just type in IGCSE circle theorems. On we go to statistics. Now this can vary quite a lot at paper two, not so much on paper four, which I will talk about in that video, but it can be either a combi combined mean style question. So the mean of these set of numbers is blah, the mean of uh, another set of numbers is blah, work out the combined mean of the uh, set of numbers. That can happen. Or it can be like I've got here in this question, a simple presentation of data. So this diagram here, for example, this is called a stem and leaf diagram. And you need to be aware of all, all the basic ways of presenting data. This is one of them. There was a compound bar chart question as well last year, and you need to be familiar with that. Again, six in 13 papers doesn't appear every year, often on a paper four, but again, something to be aware of. Area and volume in terms of pi. And this has certainly become more frequent, these non-calculator error and volume questions and Pythagoras questions, trig questions, etc. And having to write your answers in terms of pi. So you still need to use that formula sheet that's at the start of all two, four, and six papers, but they'll either get you to work out something in terms of pi, or as you can see in this question, which is a bit tougher, they'll say the area of the sector is equal to something, and you'll need to work backwards to find the angle. That, particularly at the higher levels, is more frequent. Again, this question comes from the last year or so. And on to variation and proportion. It's always a favorite of the 0677 course, and it's just appeared much more frequently overall, uh, paper two and paper four. And you need to be able to write an equation from a statement that looks exactly like this. Generally evenly spread, I would say, also on paper two or paper four. So something like this, y varies inversely, it's a key word there, as the square of x plus two. So if you need to make an um, equation out of this, y is proportional to one over x plus two squared, and then you'll be expected to translate this into an equation. This is probably the hardest step that students find. Again, do check out my video on variation that you'll just see above if you want to see more of these type of questions. And now we're on to the section that I'm sure you've all been waiting for at home, which is the almost certain category. And when I say almost certain, I do mean this. So if we take this topic in front of you here, which is expanding and factorizing single and double brackets, you can see it's a whopping 14 in 13 papers. So it comes up every year and sometimes it comes up even twice. And as you can see, it's still almost certain from the last couple of papers. Make sure you can factorize terms into two brackets and use factorization to simplify algebraic fractions as well. So what do I mean by this? Well, let's take this question here, question seven. So you'd be expected to do what's called splitting the term. So split it down the middle and then factorize into a single bracket. So find a common factor and then be able to use that factorization later on. So this technique is very, very important. You may even have to move these terms around so you can actually factorize this out. So for example here, you've expected to move these terms around so that you can factorize cleanly into two brackets. Pretty tough. Likewise here, you'd be expected to do some factorizing here too in order to achieve numbers here. Again, there's a couple of different ways you can do this. Almost certain, please do revise this. Okay, and you can see this question a bit better if you couldn't see that before. 
rearranging formulae. Again, a lot of algebra skills tend to appear on the Beast Paper 2s. This is one of them. They'll all, I use either the word rearrange, so that would be your trigger word for this kind of question, or make usually Y the subject, or make T the subject. And often, particularly at the higher levels, there often be two fractions to rearrange. Again, a whopping 12 and 13 papers. Now, what do I mean by this kind of question? Well, you see it here. So rearrange to make X the subject. Again, a typical way you'd want to start this is to do some what's called cross multiplying here. So if we do this, you get 5X lots of A equals B lots of 2X minus 3. Expand, bring the x's to the left-hand side, and then factorize. Again, um, if you're not sure about those kind of questions, please do revise this. Again, almost certain. It really does fall in this almost certain category. Okay, equation solving is the next one. Again, 11 out of 13 papers. Now, this can take a bit of a mix. So this could either be a simple linear equation, or they could ask you to solve simultaneous equations, generally evenly spread between these kind of questions. And very occasionally, this can appear on paper four as well. So even if it doesn't appear on the paper two that you see in front of you, just be aware this can also appear on paper four too. Now, the kind of question they could ask you here is something pretty straightforward and linear. Just when you're multiplying at the bracket here, you just have to be very careful of this minus. So minus four times five is minus 20. Minus four times minus two X is plus eight X equals zero. So that's the kind of typical mistake that students make. Make sure when you're multiplying two minuses, you get a plus. And they can sometimes combine this with other topics. So I was talking about this right at the start of the video. Again, please do go back if um, you haven't seen that part, where they might combine an equation with, the, in this case, absolute value function or modulus function. So be aware, these kind of questions give the examiners flexibility to combine a couple of extra topics in there as well. Again, big 11 in 13 papers, you need to be able to solve a variety of equations and inequalities as well. Surds. So surds make a little bit of a comeback. A um, couple of years ago, it wasn't so frequent. It's now comeback, which is to be expected because it's a very fundamental part of the course. And there are three things you're expected to do. So simplify surds. Um, expand thirds with both single and double brackets and a process called rationalizing the denominator. Okay, I did a really good series on thirds specifically. So if you check out the video above you here, you'll actually see that video. I think I'll go through it in about 12 minutes or so. So it's really short, to the point, lots of exam practice, exactly what you need for this. Uh, the kind of questions here, these are very, very typical. This comes from question six. So you'd be expected to break this third down so you can collect like terms. And here, you'll be able to rationalize the denominator. And the way we do this, there's a little tip for you, is we multiply by the conjugate. So we multiply by 5 plus root 5, top and bottom. And that will give you the rationalized third. Again, 10 in 13 papers, please do revise. You'll be missing out on a good 4 or 5 marks if you, if you do not do this. Pythagoras and trigonometry. Now, this has appeared much more frequently in the last couple of years. As I've said here, a recently recent development. Uh, one thing that's really important now, more than it has been, is knowing your exact values. So when I say exact values, um, knowing what sine 30 is or cos 30 is. So you need to know off by heart that sine 30 is equal to a half and that cos 30 here is equal to root 3 over 2. You simply need to know that. Now, whether you use the hand trick for that or you use the tables or the two key triangles, you need to know those facts. And what's interesting now is they're inserting, a bit like the 0580 course, they're inserting some of these trig equations into these uh, tests uh, with the symmetry of graphs, which you need to know in order to break these down. And a very typical question here, this is right at the end of a paper two. So if you're aiming for A stars, this is the kind of question you need to do. So you're given here tan x is equal to a constant k. And then by using symmetries of graphs, you need to be able to work out what this would be. So realizing, for example, that tan repeats every 180 degrees. And, and we're also realizing that at 90 degrees, it goes off to infinity. So you just need to know those facts. That's very important. And be able to apply them to questions like this. On the plus side of this, it won't get any harder than the questions you see in front of you. Okay, and on to indices. So this is a key topic, again, whopping 12 and 13 papers, and this doesn't include standard form. So I made standard form 
a separate topic here. And there are still three questions on that separately. So indices do appear, not usually that many marks, but again, a good two marks out of you know, the whole paper out of 40. It's still you know, a good few percent that you want to get. Now, you need to know how to work out fractional as well as negative indices, <coughs> excuse me, as well as simplifying expressions of indices. As I said, just said here, it can appear with standard form. So the kind of question you would get here is 32 to the power of two fifths. So if you're not sure how to work out a question like this, then again, I've made a great video series specifically for IGCSE on indices where I go through these questions in great detail. Again, only 10, 15 minutes long. So again, do check out the video above you. And on to probability. How can I not mention probability when it comes to IGCSE? Um, the great thing is there is a real pattern to this. And the pattern is, it's generally either a relative frequency question or it's a tree diagram question. Usually it does not vary between those two topics on a paper two specifically. And it's become more popular. So they're trying to put more of these probability non-calculator questions onto the paper two. Now, what do I mean by relative frequency? Well, if you have a look at this question, this is really, 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 really typical. Really, really typical. And if you want to know out more about this particular topic, if you see this question and have no idea what's going on, then again, I've made a all of IGCSE probability video. It's quite long, but it goes through very, very thoroughly what kind of paper two questions you get, what kind of paper four questions you get as well. So do check out that, which is just going to be above you now. Again, pretty whopping 12 and 13 papers. So just to be familiar with that and be familiar that this does come up quite often. And last of all, logarithms. So logarithms, usually either simplifying a log statement or working out a log with index rules. It wasn't so popular a couple of years ago, get a bit like SIRDS, but it has come back after a couple of years of not being so often. Now, what does a log question look like on this particular course? Because it can vary depending what IGCSE course you do here. Well, something exactly like this. So they break it down usually into a logarithmic statement, something like this. So all they want you to know here is that essentially the question is asking three to the power of four is equal to X. That's how you translate this log statement. And I'll let you work that out at home. And then this kind of question here, what they'll do is get you to use the log laws. So in this case, um, we use log law three to bring the two to the back and the three to the back. So we get log x squared minus log two cubed equals log 50. And then you need to realize that minusing logs is the same as dividing. So then we get log x squared over two cubed, which is equal to eight, of course, uh, is equal to log 50. And only at this point can you raise each side to the power of 10, or in other words, this cancels, and I'll let you work out the rest from there. So hopefully you enjoyed this prediction video. Again, please do like and subscribe, particularly if you want more prediction videos on the paper fours. Also, if you're doing the 0580 course, that will be coming out shortly as well. And hopefully this has really broken down exactly what topics that you need to know. So just to recap very quickly, we need to do logs, probability, indices, Pythagoras and trigonometry, SIRDS, equation solving, rearranging formulae, and expanding and factorizing. If you prioritize those topics first, that will give you a good at least 40% of the topics on the paper before we even talk about the often topics and the topics of note as well. Okay, if you want to check out last year's prediction video so you can compare how I predicted to what it was, then please do click on the link in front of you and you can read the comments and make your mind up for yourself how good my predictions were. All right, bye-bye for now.